Bibles this morning and go to the Gospel of Matthew chapter number 5. Matthew's Gospel in chapter number 5 is where we'll begin our message this morning. And if you do me a favor and get Romans in chapter number 10 in the other hand, because we'll be making our way over there momentarily. Matthew's Gospel chapter number 5 and also in the New Testament, the book of Romans And chapter number 10, I'll give you just a moment to find these two places, Matthew chapter 5, and we'll go to Romans in just a little bit, put a bookmark there, put a tassel there, put a pen or your finger there, and we'll get there here in just a minute to Romans chapter number 10. Appreciate you being here this morning. We trust the Lord to speak to your heart through his word. Matthew's gospel in chapter number 5, we find the Lord begins his message, which is commonly referred to as the Sermon on the Mount. The Lord continues this message for three straight chapters. You'll find it in Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6, and Matthew chapter number 7, where he culminates this message with the parable about the man who built his house on the rock and the man who built his house on the sand. The Lord culminates this entire message and these thoughts that he's been given by saying a foolish man is a man who has heard the word that Jesus preached and didn't do anything with it. He's a man that doesn't have a foundation. He's a man that can be swept away by the problems of life and by the judgment of God when it sweeps down on this world. But a man or a woman who takes heed to what has been said in the word of God through the preaching of the things of God and the Holy Ghost speaking to your heart is a man that has a foundation. He's a man that has a a rock to stand on. He doesn't have his own thoughts, doesn't have what the world says about things. He's standing on the rock of ages, the Lord Jesus Christ and the truths of the scripture. Can I just say this morning, I'm glad I got a firm foundation. I'm glad what guides my life this morning, Brother John Glenn, is not what the world's perception of truth or error is today because it's constantly changing. (laughs) You get up tomorrow and their version of what they believe to be truth will change. And then the next day it'll change. And can I say I'm not interested in what the world thinks is truth or is false. I'm interested in what God says the truth is. And at the end of the day, I'm, I'm so blown away that people can even make such crazy statements as this. But people say things like this, well, you have your truth and I have my truth. That's insanity. There's not your truth and my truth. There's just the truth this morning. The truth is truth regardless of if it hair lips the whole crowd. It doesn't matter what you believe or what I believe. What is the truth of the matter this morning? And so in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, the Lord's just getting ramped up. He's just... Getting, getting taken off the runway here. He's given the Beatitudes that we find in the first 12 verses. And then he's coming down and we'll begin reading in verse number 17. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. If you found your place, say amen. amen. Jesus said, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. Verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Notice verse 20, our text. Please don't miss this verse this morning. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. At the end of this verse, or here in verse number 20, at the end of this segment of what the Lord's been saying, we find the Lord is going to make a, a hard statement in this Sermon on the Mount. He's going to make a statement that's about the law of God and your rightness. That's where the word righteousness comes from, being right. Your rightness or your righteousness towards the law or 
to the law. And he makes this statement in verse 20 that except your righteousness, your correctness towards the law of God, except your righteousness when it comes to the law of God goes beyond and exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, then I've got bad news for you. You ain't going to heaven. Now, I'll just be honest with you this morning. If I'm standing in the crowd, Brother Collins, and I hear Jesus say, except your righteousness is far greater, exceeding the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, then you'll in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Immediately, I'm probably scratching my head, and I'm thinking something like this. Who in the world in this crowd can ever get to heaven then? I mean... <laughs> How can any of us that are standing here listening to you preach, Jesus, how can any of us ever hope to walk on a street of gold, live in a mansion, live behind a wall of jasper, and live behind a gate of pearl, Lord? This seems to be an utter and total impossibility for people like us. And you say, well, why, preacher? It's not that big a deal. If you don't think what he said is a big deal, maybe it's because you, listen to me, don't miss this, you're going to miss the whole message. Maybe it's because you haven't examined the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. To understand the gravity of what Jesus is saying here in this text, you would have to know what kind of righteousness the scribes and Pharisees had to at least equal, or as Jesus said, exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. I want to preach just for a few minutes on this thought. I got a long introduction and a short message, so hang with me. I want to preach just for a few minutes on this subject. Will you make it to heaven? Will, will you make it to heaven? Because according to this, except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you ain't going this morning. <laughs> you say, well, that's no big deal for me. I, I can do that. Are you sure about that? Are you real sure about that? See, I don't know, are you going to make it to heaven according to what Jesus is saying here? Because I ain't sure a whole bunch of us is going if we got to stand up to this right here. See, when you start examining the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, this is what you'll find. They were a crowd that knew the Scripture. These people were not Bible illiterates. Brother Travis, these were not people that didn't read the Bible, study the Bible, or commit the Bible to memory. As a matter of fact, Brother Kevin Stewart, I've been told and I've read that to even be a Pharisee, you had to be able to quote the first five books of the Old Testament from memory. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Brother Zach. I just confess to you this morning, I know a little bit of Bible, and I can quote some chapters out the Bible. And I can quote some of the Bible, but I promise you this, I fall way short of being able to quote the first five books of the Old Testament from memory this morning. I'll tell you how much scripture they knew. Listen to me, how much scripture they knew when Herod uh, had been visited by the wise men in Matthew chapter 2. Uh, Herod said, hey, where is he that is born king of the Jews? And he said, let's call the scribes. That's part of this crowd here. He said, call the scribes. And when they called the scribes, in brother Keith Haynes he said where is the Christ going to be born where is he that's born king of the Jews and immediately brother they flipped right to the scripture went right to Micah and said thou Bethlehem Ephrata though thou be little among the nations yet from thee shall come forth the ruler and said he's coming out of Bethlehem Judea even they look, look let's just be honest this morning if I started walking around this room I'm talking about are you going to make it to heaven you got to have more righteousness than what I'm preaching about right now you getting me you with me? Listen to me. If I started walking around the room and I said, give me five verses of scripture on the virgin birth. You couldn't do it this morning. They could. If I started walking around saying, give me two verses on where Jesus Christ prophetically would be born at. You couldn't take me to the scripture. If I walked to you and I said, give me ten verses on Jesus Christ in the Old Testament and prophecies about him coming and dying and ruling and reigning, you wouldn't know where to find them. You'd have to call Oh, Dr. Bottle Stopper, Dr. Snazel Bridges this morning. But I'm telling you, this is a crowd. They knew the scriptures this morning. 
They didn't just know the scripture, but when Jesus preached in certain times, they even agreed with him about things he preached. Jesus was preaching in Mark chapter number 12. Hang with me, I'm headed somewhere. Jesus was preaching in Mark chapter number 12, and they asked him, they said, what's the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and the second's like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. And one of the scribes, stepped up brother Skip and he said master you have said right and to love the Lord is more than whole burnt offerings and sacrifices and to love him with all your heart is the highest duty of man and Jesus looked at that scribe and he said you ain't far from the kingdom of God you said right I mean these are people that know the scripture these are people that agreed with Jesus on some of his preaching these are people I'm talking about their righteousness these are people that tithe Except, 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 your, except your righteousness. See, the Bible said, Brother Steve, the Bible said they tithed, this is the Pharisees, they tithed of mint and anise and cumin. You say, what's mint, anise, and cumin? It's tiny, little, bitty, microscopic seeds. These fellas didn't just tithe 10% on their monetary income. They tithed 10% on what their plants brought forth in seeds, Brother Zeke. They would get their little, bitty, tiny seeds and measure them out, weigh them out, and tithe off of them. Some of y'all ain't even tithing off the income this morning, much less off the little, bitty, small stuff that you got. You going to make it to heaven? You say, my God, preacher, where are we headed with this? Hang on. I'm going somewhere with this. I find they prayed three times a day. The Bible said, Brother Zeke, that them Pharisees and scribes, they were supposed to go to the temple and pray three times a day, morning, noon, and night. And we find there's a Pharisee that the Bible said in Luke 18, he went to the temple to pray at the time of prayer. Some of y'all ain't even prayed today. You ain't bowed your head one time. You ain't asked God to bless the service. You, the first time you're going to pray today, and probably the only time you're going to pray today, is when you bow your head over your Friday chicken at the restaurant and say Lord bless us Lord Jesus did anybody see me (laughs) they tithe they pray the new scripture God help us they fasted twice a week There's a Pharisee praying in Luke 18, Brother Jack, and he was praying, and he said, Lord, not only do I tithe, Brother Chad, but I fast twice a week. (laughs) I'm I'm studying this message out, Brother Mark. I ain't sure I'm going to make it, praise God. (laughs) Fasting twice a week. Every week. I can look at some of us and tell we ain't fasted once a month. I tell you how I tell you how righteous these guys are, Brother Rodney. They even some of them invited Jesus to their house. The Bible said over in the book of Luke, chapter number seven, there was a Pharisee that invited Jesus to come, Brother Ivy, to eat at his house. Some of y'all wouldn't dare invite Jesus if he was here to your house. You'd have to hide too much stuff. You'd have to get the you'd have to get the beer out the refrigerator. You'd have to hide this and hide that. You'd have to turn the TV off. You'd have to hide your DVDs. You'd have to scrape your magazines up and throw them in the trash bin. You wouldn't invite Jesus to your house. You'd have to change the way you talk, you'd have to change the way you act, you'd have to change the way you'd change everything (laughs) invited Jesus to his house we find there's a Pharisee brother Heath, Nicodemus the Pharisee went to Jesus by night because he was concerned about his soul we find these Pharisees didn't just tithe, they didn't just pray, they didn't just fast, they didn't just know scripture, they didn't just invite Jesus to their house, but we find that they went to the house of God every service Every single service, they went to church when the doors was open. We find they preached against adultery. Luke 18, 11 said they preached against adultery. They preached against extortion. They preached against being unjust. And according to the Lord in our text, now listen to me, I'm coming to my message. Will you make it to heaven? According to our text, the Lord said, your righteousness can't just equal theirs. Your righteousness has got to go beyond that. Any of y'all been fasting more than two times a week? Any of y'all been tithing more than what they tithing? Any of y'all been having Jesus over more than they had? 
Any of y'all been going to church more times than just when the doors is open? Any of y'all know more scripture than what they know, the first five books of the Old Testament? I'm just going to be honest with you this morning. If this is the standard for righteousness and getting to heaven, y'all all better tune in. We're in a mess this morning. You sit here this morning. I'm not just talking about it must exceed the outward. It must exceed, Brother Charlie, the inward. You want to know something about the Pharisees, Brother Jacob? They had all that outward righteousness, but you got to exceed not just their outward righteousness, but their inward righteousness. Because Brother Bill Tyson, the Bible said about the Pharisees that even though they did all this stuff outside, their heart wasn't right. And they were like whited sepulchers full of dead men's bones. On the outside, they looked good, but on the inside, they were full of death. They were full of hate. They were full of ex- Distortion and excess. They were full of filth and lust and lying and malignity. They were just full of death inside. You got to just go not beyond the outside, but the inside too. And I want everybody to hear this this morning coming straight from your pastor. If I have to make it to heaven on my own righteousness, then I'm never going to make it. And you're not either. I just told you a verse where Jesus said, Brother Kent, that unless your righteousness goes above and beyond everything I just said and so much more stuff that I ain't even got time to preach about that the Pharisees did, then you are in no case. Don't even think about it. You ain't making it to heaven. But brother, I know I'm going to heaven this morning. You say, but but preacher, are you that righteous? No, sir. I am not this morning. And if I have to depend on my own righteousness, I am not going to make it. You say, well, preacher, how can we make it preacher I'm not living up to that preacher I can't ever live up to that how am I going to meet God's standard of righteousness that exceeds that of the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees I'll tell you how you're going to have to get it from somebody else somebody else is going to have somebody else is going to have to live the perfect standard somebody else is going to have to live the absolute standard of righteousness towards the law And that person is going to have to hand you their righteousness this morning. You say, is there such a person that could live a perfect sinless life and then hand me that righteousness because I can't live it and I can't earn it and I can't make it. Is there such a person? Yep. Romans chapter 10 Romans chapter 10, will you make it to heaven? Listen to me, you're not going to make it on your own works. I just proved it to you. Not one of you is living up to the excess of the standard of the scribes and Pharisees. Not one of you. I'm not, and you're not. And if you sit here this morning and say, oh yeah, my righteousness is exceeding the scribes and Pharisees in the way I live. You are a liar. You are double-barreled, full-fledged, egg-sucking hypocrite liar this morning. You ain't exceeding that. You say, where am I going to get a righteousness then that exceeds that righteousness so that I can enter into the kingdom of heaven? Romans 10, 1. Romans 10.1, Paul's been talking about righteousness in chapter 9. He's going to talk about righteousness more in chapter 10. Brethren, Romans 10.1, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is this, that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Watch it, verse 3, 4, 5, watch it. For they being ignorant, not of their own righteousness, they're ignorant of God's righteousness. And going about to establish their own righteousness, that's the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Verse 4, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. In other words, if you're going to try and live by the law, you got to keep it all. If you break one, James said, if you offend in one point, then you've offended in all of them. If you broke one 
commandment, then you are all ten commandment breaker. If you broke just one, then you broke them all. You said, I ain't broke none of them. Come on now. You ain't never bore false witness. Come on now. You ain't never committed adultery. You say, no, sir. But Jesus said, if you looked after a woman or looked after a man and lusted after them in your heart, you've committed adultery with them already this morning. Uh, come on now. You ain't never committed murder. You say, I ain't no murderer. But Jesus said, if you hate your brother without a cause, uh, that you're a murderer this morning. That Bible said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. You telling me you ain't never put something in front of God? You ain't never put something in front of the Bible? You ain't never put something in front of his church? You ain't never put something in front of prayer time? Sure you have. If you broke one of them, you broke all of them. You are a lawbreaker, lawbreaker, lawbreaker this morning. Watch what he said. Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law. Man, the man which doeth those things shall live in them. Verse 6. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. So on and so forth. You say, what's he showing us in this text? He's showing you this. Don't miss this. The only righteousness that God will accept. The only righteousness that God will take. The only righteousness that God will allow a man or woman into heaven with is not their own righteousness. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. And if you're going to make it to heaven this morning, it's not going to be because of your righteousness it's going to be because of the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning the Bible said here in verse number 3 the Bible said that Israel kept going about to establish their own righteousness brother Noah they kept going about trying to get God to accept all their good deeds and all their commandment keeping and all of their rightness they wanted God to accept it but God said I won't accept that I'm only going to accept one righteousness and it's the right Righteousness of my son. Y'all listen to me this morning. Some of y'all are just like Israel. You keep running around wanting God to accept your righteousness. You think, oh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm living a good life. I'm not being ugly and I'm not being rude. You say, here, God, take my church membership. God said, I don't want it. He said, here, God, take my baptismal certificate. And God said, that ain't good enough. And you say, here, God, I've been married for a long time. That ain't good enough. Here, God, I work hard. And I provide for my family and I pay all my bills and, and I buy the groceries for the family. And God says, Great, but that ain't good enough to get you to heaven. Here, God, uh, I try and help my neighbor and I try and lend a helping hand to people that need a hand. And I'm a benevolent person. I give to charities and I even give to the church sometimes. And I go to church and I sit among people that claim to know God. Here, God, take this. And God said, I don't want that. Uh, uh, God said, I only want one righteousness and that's the righteousness of my son it's the only one I'll accept it's the only one that's good enough and this morning if you're going to make it to heaven you're going to go on the back of Jesus Christ's righteousness or you're not going at all this morning except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven you got a righteousness better than that? You living cleaner than that? You dressing cleaner than that? You walking cleaner than that? You talking cleaner than that? You doing more than that? I already proved to you, ain't none of you doing what they were doing. And not only have you come up short of where they are, you're not even close to where you're supposed to be because you got to exceed it. You going to make it to heaven? Not on your own righteousness, you're not. Keep on thinking God's going to accept your righteousness. Keep on working your brains out thinking this is going to get me to heaven. I'm telling you where you're going to wind up at. You're going to wind up in hell for all eternity. God knew we couldn't make it on our own. God knew we couldn't earn it on our own. God knew we could never do enough on our own. So God sent someone to be the perfect standard of his righteousness. I want to preach on his righteousness just for a minute and we'll be done. Will you make it to heaven? It's all going to depend on whose righteousness you have this morning. If you have your own righteousness, you'll never make it to heaven. 
But if you have the righteousness of Jesus Christ freely given to you because you trusted in what he did for you, then brother, you're as good as in glory as where you sat this morning. And there ain't nothing all the imps of hell can do about it. Let me say several things about this righteousness. This righteousness, except your righteousness, exceed their righteousness. What kind of righteousness do I need to make it to heaven? Number one, you're going to need a fulfilled righteousness. You need a righteousness that is fulfilled. You say, what do you mean, preacher? A righteousness that is fulfilled. Well, do you remember our first text we read this morning? Matthew 5, 17. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said this. You need a righteousness that's fulfilled. Jesus said, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. He said this. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Jesus offers a Fulfilled righteousness. Can I just pause for a minute and say this? I get, Brother Greg, I get so ticked off at this crowd running around today acting like Jesus was some sort of long haired hippie anarchist. I've heard preachers say such stupid things as this that Jesus broke the law to save us. That's a lie hatched out of hell. If he, broke, if he broke the law, then he's a sinner just like you. And he couldn't save you out of a two foot deep mud hole, friend. He ain't good enough to save you out of hell if he couldn't even fulfill the law himself. All these bunch of godless, heathenistic trash commercials that's been airing today, showing a bunch of sodomites, showing a bunch of wild criminals, and then saying things like this. He gets us. No, he don't. Oh, God, God, gets, God gets you. All you folk running around burning, out, burning stuff down, burning buildings down, throwing rocks through police windows, and living your wicked, reprobate, ungodly life. God gets you. No, he don't. He commands all men everywhere to repent. He don't get you this morning. Jesus ain't your homeboy. He ain't your Jesus dog this morning. He's the Lord of glory. And he fulfilled the whole law this morning. Jesus ain't your buddy and he ain't your homie. He's the Lord of glory and he's the Savior of all men this morning. Amen. Listen to me, Brother Kevin Steele. When Jesus was dying on the cross, in his dying breath, he said these words, Brother Randall Beaver. It is finished. You say, what was he? Hallelujah. Say, what was he saying this morning? This is what he was saying. I've lived the life, encompassed all of God's law, never broke one jot, never broke one tittle, never broke one word of the law, lived a perfect sinless life for 33 years, and it's all been fulfilled. Tempted of the devil. Hey, you hungry, ain't you? Turn these stones to bread. No, sir. It's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God doth man live. Hey, get the glory for yourself. Jump off the pinnacle of the temple. Let them see you do it. Because it's written that he'll give his angels charge over thee. Lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. No, sir. Jesus said it's written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Hey, here's all the kingdoms of the world. Fall down and worship me. I give them all to you. And Jesus said, no, sir. It's written thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. And him only shalt thou serve. I mean, Brother Lee tempted all that time of the devil. And never not one time did he ever stump his toe never one time did he ever fall for the trick I mean brother he walked in pure and clean and he walked out pure and clean he didn't have to get forgiveness he didn't have to get straight or get right he stayed straight and he stayed right I mean every time that the Pharisees tried to entrap him every time the Pharisees tried to get him messed up he just stepped around and kept right on going I mean brother he never had lust pride or envy in his heart I mean brother he never coveted anything he never stole anything they never never heard him curse one time 
They never heard him tell a dirty joke he shouldn't have told. They never heard, saw him be untoward toward the opposite sex. They never saw him lose his temper and end up just like you and I do. No, sir. But he lived 33 years and everything the law required, everything Moses' law said a man had to do to be right in the sight of God, Jesus fulfilled every last bit of it and said it's finished. Nothing left out. I fulfilled the whole thing this morning. You know what kind of righteousness you need to make it to heaven? You need somebody who fulfilled the righteousness of the law. I mean, you really want to stand before God thinking that you've done that? (laughs) You really want to stand before God and take your chances saying, I've fulfilled the whole law. I've never broke anything. Do you really want to stand before God like that ignorant, rich, young ruler that come to Jesus? And he said, what good thing must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, you know the commandments, don't kill, don't steal, don't bear false witness, honor your father and your mother. And that fool was so dumb. Brother Randy, that fool was so dumb. He said, oh, all these have I observed from my youth up. I don't like anything. You're a liar. Sure you have. I don't want to stand before God thinking I've got it all together. I need a fulfilled righteousness. Can I say this? This righteousness is not just a fulfilled righteousness, but it's also a faith righteousness. It's a righteousness that comes by faith. (laughs) You say this morning, preacher, I agree with you. I'm with you. My righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. My righteousness don't even get close to that, so I'm not going to make it to heaven. Okay, I agree with you. Jesus lived that perfect fulfillment of righteousness. Now, what do I have to do to get that? Tell me how much money I got to donate to the church. Tell me what kind of good deed I need to do. I need to get baptized. I'll come up there, change my clothes, get down in the water. Do I got to, you know, join up with the church? I'll come down, present myself to church membership. Do you see? Listen to me, listen to me. This what good thing must I do? You see there? You're right back at square one again. (laughs) You're right back in Matthew 5. You think you have to do something. You're right back to square one. You're right back to thinking, well, tell me what I got to do to earn this. If you could have earned it, then you didn't need Jesus to begin with. You could have just skipped him and done it yourself. Listen to me. Please catch this and don't miss this. If you could earn your salvation in any shape, form, or fashion, then the sacrifice of Jesus on Calvary and the 33 years of sinless perfection was absolutely a time waste. It was the most colossal waste of time that God ever did. What a waste of time. That God would send his son to live all that, die for you, and then you got to earn it still. He wasted his time. That's like the same idea, Brother Freeman, that's the same idea as saying, yeah, God wrote a book and God put his words down and God made them perfect and inspired, but, but he couldn't keep them perfect and you don't have them perfect now. <laughs> divine inspiration without divine preservation is a divine waste of time. Amen. If you don't got a perfect book in your lap, then God wasted his breath even speaking it to begin with. And if God didn't do enough to get you saved without you having to earn it, then he wasted his time for 33 years on planet earth. It's a faith righteousness. You say, where do you find that? Look back at Romans 10. We're going to do just a little bit of study in Romans here for just a minute, and then we're going to run to the finish and let you go home. Romans chapter 10. I love this. We'll start in verse number 9, Romans 10, 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus... (laughs) <laughs> and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Watch it. Here it is, verse 10. For with the heart, man, I told you it's a faith righteousness. It's a righteousness that comes by faith. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. What do I got to do to get that righteousness? Believe. 
stop trusting you and start trusting him. Come to a place where you bow your knee to what he did. Stop sitting there saying, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to make it to heaven. No, you won't. You wind up in hell. Come to a place where you say, I'm tired of running. I'm tired of doing and I'm going to trust Jesus Christ and him alone for what he did for me. Y'all listen to me. If what Jesus Christ did on Calvary is not good enough to get me to heaven, then I'm just as good as in hell where I stand at this morning. But I'm telling you, uh, I am trusting 1,000%. I mean, I'm trusting with everything I got in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm not trusting in what Cody did. I'm trusting in what Jesus did. Uh, And one day as an 18-year-old boy, I throwed myself on Christ. Uh, Thank God. And lean it on Christ and he is enough. Go back to Romans 3. Watch Romans 3. Watch what your Bible said. It's a faith righteousness. It's a righteousness of faith. Watch what your Bible said in Romans 3. Verse number 10. We'll start in verse 9. Romans 3, 9. Romans 3, 9 said, what then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Oh, I'm a pretty good person. No, according to that, you ain't. Oh, Grandma was a great lady. According to that, she wasn't. Oh, Papa was the sweetest soul you ever met. According to that, he wasn't. I'm telling you this morning, there ain't never been a person lived outside of Jesus Christ that didn't need help getting to heaven. I'm telling you, little old grandma, white-haired papa, and sweet little old junior, or sweet little old baby doll girl, I'm telling you, ain't none of them been good enough to work or earn their way to heaven. They're all born with bad seed. They're all born with bad blood. They're all born an unrighteous, ungodly race that's going to wind up in hell without God unless they get somebody else's righteousness applied to them. Watch what it says. It just, it don't get no better. This is the pic, this is the picture of mankind from God. Verse 11, Romans 3. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they've used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Will you make it to heaven? Oh, my righteousness is going to be better than the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. This is you. This is me. Verse 15, their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Some of y'all sitting here this morning, this is like water off a duck's back. You ain't scared of judgment. You ain't scared of hell. You ain't scared of God. You sitting there, I ain't scared of me. Ain't worrying me. I come in like I am and I don't care what you say. I'm going to leave like I am. There ain't no fear of God before your eyes. You are Romans chapter 3. Verse 19, now we know that what things soever the law saith, It saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Oh, but glad verse, happy verses coming up. Watch how the script flips. Watch the righteousness of faith. Verse 21. But now. Well, glory. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, y'all. You say, why are you getting excited? Because I'm in Romans chapter 3, verse 9 through verse number 20. That's me. All that bad stuff I just read about. Brother Jeff, that's me this morning. I'm the one that the way of God and the way of peace I've not known. I'm the one there is none righteous. No, not one. I'm the one that wasn't seeking after God. I'm the one that the deceit of asps is in their lips and their feet shift to run to shed blood. That's me and that's you. But verse 21, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which here it is, it's the faith righteousness. Even the righteousness of God, how do I get it? How do I get it, preacher? Here it is. Which 
is by faith of Jesus Christ. Watch what it says. Unto all. And upon all them stipulation that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You you say, preacher, what's that saying right there? It's saying this, that if you want God's righteousness, there's just one place to get it. And it ain't through the Baptists, and it ain't through the Methodists, and it ain't through the Catholics, and it ain't through the Muslims, and it ain't through the Buddhists, and it ain't through the atheists, and it ain't through the agnostics. There's just one way to get it. And it ain't through a preacher, and it ain't through a pope, and it ain't through a priest. There's just one way to get it. And it ain't through the baptismal pool, and it ain't through church members and it ain't because you're a good person. There's just one way to get it. It's by faith in Jesus Christ. It's by faith in Jesus Christ. It's what Jesus did for us, not what we can do for ourselves. And this morning, if you want to be righteous in the sight of God, if you want to be holy in the sight of God, if you want God to accept you into heaven when you suck your last breath, you're going to have to borrow the righteousness of Jesus this morning. It just gets better and better. Watch verse 24. This this text is so wonderful. Verse 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness. I am not standing up here declaring my own righteousness, brother Xander. I don't have none. I'm standing up here declaring to you the righteousness of Jesus this morning. To declare the righteous, his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say it this time, his righteousness. That he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Watch verse 27. Where's boasting then? <laughs> Who's going to stand up, put your fingers in your suspender straps and say... Tell y'all I've been living such a good life. My righteousness has exceeded the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. I'm going to earn my way to heaven. Where? No. Did you not just read everything that I just told you that Paul said? How rotten you are, how wicked you are, how ungodly you are, how you're going to wind up in hell for all eternity. But now the Lord has offered everybody, everybody, not the white, not the black, not the rich, not the poor, not the bond, not the free, everybody. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you've been. I don't care what you've said. I don't care how low you've gone. I don't care how sinful and messed up you are. I'm telling you, if you'll come to God by faith this morning, he will just give you his perfect righteousness. Good God Almighty. Keep reading just for a minute, and I'm going to give my good God Almighty out. Verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay. It's faith righteousness, y'all. But by the law of faith. This morning... In comes walking some old sot, wicked, ungodly sinner. I mean, comes walking in, Brother David. They've been in every dive that they could find in this world. They've drunk everything, Brother Mike, that the world could put in front of their lips. They've smoked everything that ever come across the mindset of man. They've laid in every bed with everything from here to the ungodly pit. And I mean, brother, they fought every dirty thing. They've said every dirty thing. I mean, brother, they (laughs) not only is their righteousness not exceeding the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, they're way down here. They're a long ways away from that. They ain't going to make it to heaven, brother Donald. They ain't going to get there. And all of a sudden this morning, you hear this preacher. (laughs) <laughs> you better save you. They died for everybody. And no matter what you've done or where you've been. And that whole long litany list of unrighteousness, that whole lifetime of unrighteousness that I mean is just longer than this building wrapped around ten times. You ain't never going to live that down. All of a sudden you realize, I ain't never going to get to heaven on my own. I need somebody else's righteousness. That sinner falls on his knees. He ain't brought no money with him. He ain't brought no good works with him. He ain't brought no membership card with him. He just falls for mercy and cries out and says, Oh, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. 
I believe Jesus died for my sins. I'm trusting Jesus. Please save me. I believe Jesus died for me, rose again for me. You say, what happens in that instant? I'm not talking about next week. I'm not talking about Brother Archie later on tonight. I mean right then. I mean right then. I mean just like that. God picks all that righteousness of Jesus up. All that righteousness that I could never earn. All that law that had been fulfilled. And God sets it down on that man and applies it to his account. And now when God sees that man, he no longer sees the litany list of unrighteousness, but he sees the righteousness of his only begotten son. He sees what Jesus Jesus did and the life that Jesus lived and he applies the righteousness of Christ to that man. Glory! That's what happened to me. Hallelujah! Glory to God! You say, I don't understand a lick of this. Maybe because you ain't experienced what I'm preaching about. (laughs) I tried to buy mercy with all my good. I tried to earn grace, but there's no way I could. If I gained the whole world, I'd still be lost without the blood Jesus shed on the cross. Great is the mercy, great is the love, great are my many sins, but for the blood, I'd still be drowning in death's bitter flood, hopelessly perishing, but for the blood. It's a righteousness by faith. It's a faith righteousness. You say, illustrate it to me. I've tried my best. I've tried my best to illustrate it to you, Brother Mike. But Paul does a pretty good job. Look at chapter 4 of Romans. Chapter 4 of Romans. I'm enjoying myself preaching here, y'all. It's dangerous when a Baptist preacher starts enjoying his own preaching. I'm about to get in this lady's wheelchair and pop wheelies all up and down the aisle. Praise God. By God, if I get in it, you push me. Amen. Lord of God, son. Watch what he said in Romans chapter 4, verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father is pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof the glory, but not before God. In other words, if he was justified by works, he's a pretty good old boy. He's like scribes and Pharisees, man. Verse 3, for what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. You say, how did Abraham get that righteousness? You find it in Genesis 15. This is how he got it. God come to Abraham one day, Brother Junior, and he said this. He said, uh, Abe, I know you're getting real old. 90 died. Sarah's 90. But I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do for you. And the Bible said God took him out of the tent and walked him abroad. Exodus 15. Look at it. Genesis 15. And he looked up and he showed him all the stars of heaven. And he said, Abraham, I'm going to give you that many kids. And he said, look at that sand down there. And he looked at all that sand. He said, I'm going to give you that many young men. It's impossible. Brother Joey, that's impossible. And it said this. And Abraham believed God. And he counted it to him for righteousness. In other words, Abraham said, Lord, you telling me, old as I am, old as my wife is, you going to let us have youngins like the stars of heaven and sand on the seashore? And the Lord said, yep. He said, I believe you. <laughs> you what? I believe you. You believe that crazy thing I just told you. Yeah, you said it. I believe it. God said, well, I'll tell you what, Abe, if you believe that, here, you can just have my righteousness. That's how I got it, Brother Mark. One day I heard, whew, one day I heard a preacher preach, 
And he said all that stuff that I just said a minute ago. He said Jesus died on a cross for me 2,000 years ago. I've never seen it. He said that he shed blood for me. I've never seen it. He said he rose again three days later for me. I've never seen it. And he said if I'd put my faith in what Jesus did, if I'd believe that, then he'd make me righteous. He'd put his spirit in me. He'd wash my sins away. He'd give me a home in heaven. He'd make me a child of God. You know what I did? I said, all right, God, I believe you. You believe that? Well, you said it. I believe it. And God said, fine. (laughs) There's my righteousness. And this morning, I'm telling you, if you'll just come to Christ just like that, in childlike faith, don't try and reason it all out. Don't try and figure it all out. Just come in childlike faith, believing what God said. God will give you righteousness that far exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. It's a fulfilled righteousness. It's a faith righteousness. I ain't even going to give you the last one we done. It's a forceful righteousness. According to Paul in Philippians, Paul said this righteousness is in him, and that's what's helping him live for Jesus now. Can I make this statement to you, Esther? Help me. I'm done. I ain't even going to preach my last point. I've been preaching too long. I ain't even going to preach my last point. I got a lot to say on this point, so I ain't going to give it to you. But I want to make this statement to you. When the righteousness of Jesus Christ is applied to your account, Brother Chris Fowle, According to Philippians 3, 9, and 10, that means God starts conforming you to Jesus. He doesn't give you his righteousness, and then you just go live a lawless life. That is so foreign to the Bible. The idea that God has given me his righteousness, that means I got it for free, and now I can just go live and do whatever I want to do. That is not what your Bible said. The Bible said... How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? God gave us his righteousness, put it on the inside, and I still mess up regularly. But what helps a Christian live the Christian life? We're living his righteousness through us. You can't live for Jesus without Jesus being on the inside. There's a whole lot of people trying to be a Christian without Christ living in them. The Bible says... Being made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. The Bible said that the righteousness, Romans 8, 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. That righteousness of Jesus Christ, when it was applied to me by faith for free, what did it do, preacher? It didn't just make me righteous in the sight of God, even though it did. It started working its way out. And that righteousness, Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. For God hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. This morning, I simply wanted to ask you, listen to me, listen to me. Will you make it to heaven? Accept your righteousness. Exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. You shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And if this morning, if you've not accepted Christ's righteousness, then you are most certainly not going to heaven because you are not living as clean as the scribes and Pharisees. So your choice is this this morning. Keep trying to live your own little good life and march your way straight down to a lake of fire or this morning come by faith and accept what Jesus did on your behalf have his righteousness applied to your account and enjoy being saved and going to heaven he'll take you just as you are you don't got to clean up, dress up, change up he'll take you just like you are and then he'll do the change in your life will you make it to heaven? Let's all stay in heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Maybe this morning, you child of God, just like to say, Lord, thank you for applying your righteousness to me. I never could have earned it. Never could have worked for it. Thank you so much for that righteousness of Jesus. 
No one's looking around, heads are bowed, and eyes are closed. I want to ask you this question real quick, and we're going to go. In the stillness of this moment, I've asked you, will you make it to heaven? Now, right there where you sit, I wonder, do you know? Maybe right now you say, preacher, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> I don't have, I've never trusted Christ. I don't have the righteousness of Jesus, and I, I ain't going to make it, preacher. Not going to make it. I'm not living that clean. Preacher, pray for me. I'm not going to make it to heaven like I am. If there's one in the building that would admit that this morning, would you slip your hand up right where you sit? Just slip it up, slip it back down. Let me pray for you. Maybe you're at the altar. Say, Preacher, I'm not going to make it to heaven. But I sure want to go. Oh, I want to go, but I ain't going to make it on my own. Pray for me, preachers. There's one like that this morning. Father, I pray that you'd move in this invitation time. Those that are lost without Christ sitting here, they're trying to trust in their own righteousness. I pray they'd stop trusting their own self today. They'd fall on Jesus Christ and trust him. In Jesus' name, amen.